Welcome to the complete collection of Larry Bird's Greatest Stories Part 4. If you have missed Part 1, 2 and 3, they're up on the channel and there is a playlist link in the description box down below and on the top right of your screen amongst every other player that I've done so far. But I think it is about time that we switch it up and do a new player, so let me know which player you would like to see in the next episode of this series. Before the video begins, I would really, really appreciate it if you guys could go check out a recent video that I did. The video took about a year to make with so much editing going on and it was something that took me a long, 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 long time. So I'd really appreciate it. If you're an NBA fan and you think you may enjoy it, here is the snippet. Never say never. Because limits, like fears, are often just an illusion. But I would really appreciate if you guys could go check it out if you did happen to miss it. But without further ado, here's part four of the complete collection of Larry Bird's stories. Irving is guarding him. And as every shot went in that Larry took, he went further back and he kept on saying to Irving, aren't you going to guard me? Or, Can't you do any better? I mean, he say something like, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Ed Pinkney. Ed Pinkney. I am on a <laughs> and every shot he would shoot, he would turn to me. And I said, boy. And Larry looks right into the soul, right through the eyes of that referee. And he says to him, we're not going to quit. You make sure you don't quit either. He catches the ball and looks over at our bench and goes, I'm going to take two dribbles right, cross over left. And He's Derek McKee is on. And Derek Zotto. <laughs> Don't let him do that to you, D. <laughs> I remember the, the, the game he played against the Lakers um, the first year that the Celtics won the world championship with him on the team. Mm -hmm. He was ridiculous. He came out here. <laughs> I remember our, our sportscaster played the, the Superman theme when he was talking about him that night after the game <laughs> because he did everything. Uh, right. Points, rebounds, assists, uh, just steals, you name it. Uh, Larry has such a great mind for the game and, uh, you know, a, a, a great touch. I, I had a lot of respect for him uh, as, as a competitor. And he was one of the best, biggest trash talkers that you'll ever see in your life. <laughs> <laughs> right. Larry Bird talked more trash on the basketball court than, than anybody I've ever played against. That's Larry what I want to hear about. more trash on the court than anybody. He'd tell you where he's going. He'd tell you when he catches it, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> he, he, he was, and it was, it, was, it was great trash talking because it wasn't vulgar. I mean, he right. wasn't, you know, pounding his chest. You can just be standing next to him. He told me two things one game. You know, our rotations, uh, double teaming Kevin McHale always had to rotate to the corner, and Larry Bird was the one shooting it. You know, I would jump out and try to block a shot on rotation. You know, so he shot one, and I mean, I I'm trying to block this shot, and he, he would just tell me, Scott, Man. Scott, Scott, you're not getting that. You're a little too late. You know, a little too late. Which, why are you even jumping? Why are you say, running out of here? <laughs> but it don't was do all that. game. He say something like, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, and he talked the whole game, and it was... You know, after the game and after years of thinking about you, like, right. man, that dude. But he was, like Cap said, he was ridiculous as far as the way he played the game. And that's why he's one of the greatest players ever played. Played it, played it here. Right. Yeah, which is where it starts, right, right here. Right. The other great memory I had, and I told him this earlier, it's my, it's my greatest memory in the NBA. I mean, I'm playing 15 minutes a game. Ed Pinkney's playing 15 minutes a game. And we'd come into Hellenic College, and we'd sit in that little – nasty locker room back there and we <laughs> nobody felt like practicing i mean you could tell that the locker room was down and everybody's in there and it's just like you know we've been three games and four nights or whatever and eddie pinkney would be sitting there putting on his putting on his shoes and larry would come in there and he'd have his bag over his shoulder and his gray sweats on he'd stand over there and he'd he'd stand right over ed pinkney every day and he'd go ed pinkney ed pinkney <laughs> I am going to torture your ass today. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, you know, Bucky, I mean, and then it was on. I mean, I'd start laughing, and, and, then, and then Chief would look over there and go, what the hell are you laughing at? I'm going to torture your ass, too. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And I mean, then it was on. And I mean, we'd had, I mean, nobody felt like practicing, but he'd come in and just utter those little remarks, and we'd have a great practice. Uh, one of the best lines I ever heard was, I think it was 86, we were playing uh, Houston, and uh, we're going into game six. It's the Celtics trying to attack banner number 16 up on the roof. And the Houston Rockets trying to battle and bring about a seventh game in the 1986 NBA Finals. And the crowd is absolutely going berserk about an hour before the game. And some of the guys were still shooting before they came in. And, and it was said that, hey, I'm telling you, them fans want blood out there. And they don't care whose it is. We lose, <laughs> it's our blood. Right. And it, he, it was right because, man, that place was rocking that day. I mean, it's always rocking. And in that game, Larry Bird played his self-admitted and acknowledged greatest game that he ever played. Because in a game that had tons of guys that were winners of the genetic lottery, 7'4", Ralph Sampson, 7'0", Akeem Olajuwon, 7'0", Robert Parrish, 6'10", Kevin McHale. We called him Frankenstein, though. Kevin could stand up straight as can be. He's 6'10", but dangle those long arms of his and scratch his shins without bending over. And Kevin, when he needed that foot operated on and had the screw put in, they just took the screw out of his neck and put it right into his foot there. Frankenstein. And here's Larry. Here's Larry, who can't jump this high. I saw him dunk in one of these videos. I couldn't believe it. It must have been a, a Photoshop or something. And then... And Larry, who couldn't run faster than I can move today, I'm 61 years old, I've had 37 orthopedic operations, both of my ankles are fused, I've got a fused spine, and my knee's just been replaced. Larry, at his peak, couldn't run faster than I can move today. <laughs> yeah, with all these guys playing above the rim and just dominating everything, there was Larry, grabbing every rebound, every single rebound. And mm -hmm. instead of just putting it right back up, he would go run out to the three-point line and just throw it up there and not even look at it, just run down the court going like this. And in that game, I was playing so poorly that Larry Bird came up with his regularly repeated mantra where he would go to Casey Jones during the dead ball situation and says, Casey, you can either take Walton out or you're going to take me out. It's your choice. <laughs> That's true. And Casey Jones <laughs> always take it made out. the right decision. <laughs> A lot of people don't remember in those days that the rivalry was Philadelphia and Boston. Julia Serving and Larry Bird. Both teams were undefeated. And, um, you know, I'm the baby in the group. There's only two referees. I'm with a veteran official. The officials for tonight's ball game. Jack Madden, the veteran, is going to be one of them. That is Jack on the left, and that is Dick Pavetta on the right. And we do the first half. And the start of the second half, Dennis Johnson dives for a ball and crashes into my partner and breaks his leg. Dennis takes it to the hole, won't go, takes down Jack Madden, and that gets a big hand from the crowd. But Madden's hurt. Madden is hurt. Well, we stop the game. They carry him off on a stretcher, and I do, you know, my... Uh, my plea to both coaches, I get, I get Casey Jones and I get Billy Cunningham, and I said, coaches, listen, I'm by myself. I'm going to work for two men. I'm going to work as hard as one person can possibly work. Dick Provetta is going to whistle this one alone. He goes up to talk right now to Casey Jones. I'm sure he'll be back and explain to Billy Cunningham how he's going to work this. But this is only going to be successful if I have your cooperation. Dick, you got it. No problem. Everything is fine. And I think Billy Cunningham had to say to his assistant, what, what's his name? What, what, what's that guy's name? Yeah, Dick. Yeah, they didn't even know who I was. Look at Cunningham. He's just, he's doing laps over there, folks. And, of course, as luck would have it, Larry Bird has an unbelievable night. Every shot he took, Irving is guarding him. And as every shot went in that Larry took, he went further back. And he kept on saying to Irving, aren't you going to guard me? Oh, Bird. <laughs> Give and go, nice line, gets the ball. Quarter, they find Bird for two. Bird spins on Jay, got it, finds him, gets a step on Jay, and gets two. Man sitting there waiting for a pass right at the top. Bird open on Robert Parrish. Bird through the lane, left-hander is good and a foul. 25.
five. First half points for Larry Bird with 3.09 to play. Aren't you going to guard me? <laughs> Can't you do any better? I mean, he was the, the greatest soft-spoken trash talker I've ever met. Finally, it got too much, and I look up, and I see them choking each other. But there's a photograph of Larry and I choking one another. Actually, there was an offensive foul called on Larry um, on, on obviously the offensive end of the court. He didn't like the call, so he was really mad at the referee. And he came down court, and he was kind of like, you know, stomping, and he was in front of his bench. And it looked like a moment in which uh, he was going to take a swing and it was very uncharacteristic because, you know, we did Converse commercials together. We did Spalding commercials together. The Converse StarTex designed for the best pro player. Thank you, Larry. StarTex Unisaddle protects my ankles and gives that extra midfoot support. A great rebounder knee. It's reinforced for me. And me. Hey, maybe it was made for both of us. Must be magic. Now that's who this shoe was made for. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we were kind of cool. <laughs> uh, but I thought something was going to happen because he was, you know, he was he was definitely mad. But he was mad at the referee. He wasn't mad at me. And uh, and I just extended my arm to hold him back. And it ended up sliding up to his neck. <laughs> and then it, oh, and a, and a fight between Jay and Bird is broken out on the court. And Moses Malone takes Bird down. He's got him in a headlock. And... A melee ensues, and so I just kind of, I learned from my brother Joe that if you can't stop something before it starts, you kind of step back and take license plate numbers. Yeah. So I just kind of stepped back and watched what was going on, and in so doing, then I informed them that Bird and Irving were gone. Well, Dr. J's going. Yeah, I think Bird might be going. Yep, they're both going. They better not go at the same time, I'll tell you. Well, four technical fouls later, you know, <laughs> thanks to their cooperation, it was only four technical fouls. Cunningham starts jumping up, and, and I say to him, if you do that one more time, I'm going to throw you. He said, you don't have the guts. Bing, bong, goodbye. Very upset. And a technical call on him, and he's been asked to leave the building. So he leaves. Man, there goes Cunningham out. And Cunningham has got, who's he talking to? Somebody in the crowd now. Well, who's going to coach this game now for the Sixers? As Billy got hit with something from the crowd, that's not altogether what you call Boston uh, appreciation, folks. And I go over to the scorer's table, and Andy Jick, I always remember Andy Jick was the announcer for the Celtics, and, and the scorer says, Dick, you're throwing him on one technical foul, right? And I said, no. The other official in the first half called a technical foul on Cunningham. And he, because I said, I heard it announced. He said, yes, but he came over afterwards and changed it to Matt Gukas. So Cunningham only has one technical. Do you really want to throw him on one? I said, no, no. Let someone go into the locker room. Let's bring him back out again. <laughs> so now they go in and they get Cunningham and they bring him back out again. <laughs> and he's, he's coaching. Cunningham's back on the floor again. Boston ends up winning by 15, 18. And the response, more so from the Philadelphia people, was that Cunningham said, I really didn't know that much about this guy, Bavetta. And, but for anyone to have the courage to throw out two superstars, and that was the first time and only time either one of them have ever been thrown out of a game. So I do want to start with your first championship, which actually none of these guys were here for. Nope. And, uh, and the reason I want to get to that is, well, for a lot of reasons, but one of them was because you said this one's for Terre Haute, which I always thought was amazing. I want this one for Terre Haute. 
You won it for Terre Haute, I'll tell you that. Why did you really feel compelled to do that? Well, I didn't feel compelled. I just, you know, I... You're we, killing me, been... Larry. You're killing me here. Okay, I felt compelled. <laughs> um, <laughs> compelled that uh, we played uh, against Irvin the first time. And, you know, Jackie, if you remember that series, which I know you do, we lose game one. The Celtics had been stunned by game one and held practice behind closed doors in an attempt to regroup. We lucked out one no, game two in overtime. And now to Magic. Back over to Worthy and it's picked off. Goes to Hammonds and he lays it off and in. It's all tied up. A great play by Henderson. The Lakers knew they had given this game away. But it went into the Celtics scorebook as a victory. We get blown out by 32 in game. Am I right? Yeah, but yeah. I was yeah. 30, mm -hmm. 32 or something. Pretty good. The most lopsided defeat in Boston playoff history, and the Celtics look like beaten men. What did you call your teammates after game three? Remember? I just feel that uh, you know we got some great players on this team, but we don't have the players with uh, the heart sometimes that we need. And uh, until we get our hearts uh, where they belong, uh, we're in trouble. Bunch of I know sissies. what I called. Bunch call. of sissies. That was you, great. You, no, I know what you called us. I called all of us. You called. Uh, he said we played like a bunch of sissies. Is exactly what he said. He said we, we, not you. I didn't say that you. That, whoa. I meant you, but I have somehow I just came out we. <laughs> Bird called his teammates sissy. Challenged the entire squad. You were obviously upset because it was a bad performance, but what, Awful. were you just trying to motivate them or did you really feel that way or no, both? No, I felt that way. We just got, they had us down 38. Remember we kept yep. sitting there running too fast for them? We can't catch them. <laughs> <laughs> we can't catch them. And the Lakers were loose, confident, and happy. As far as they were concerned, they'd won all three games. The second game loss, a minor slip-up. In the heat of the moment, Boston developed a battle plan. He should go the distance. Oh, look out! And tempers flared. The Lakers' cool was blown. Instead of setting the tone, they found themselves retaliating, and their well-honed concentration was disrupted. But the physical pounding paid off for Boston. I said, how in the heck are we still in this? In overtime, Worthy, stolen by Endo Carr. And the Boston Celtics have even this NBA World Championship Series at two games apiece. <laughs> but uh, somehow we end up winning game four, go back to Boston. Having criticized his teammates, the Celtic captain took it upon himself to lead them. Moving without the ball, hitting from all over the court, bustling for position underneath. He played a brilliant all-round game. And we say, now we got to put the hammer down. We cannot let them get out here with a win. We win game five. Bird had an extraordinary game, scoring 34 points on 15 of 20 from the field and grabbing 17 rebounds. We had a pretty good lead in game six, lose it. Got game away. seven was absolutely crazy. The Lakers would remember for a long time the one they let get away. Larry Bird's two free throws capped the scoring, and in moments, the Celtics would be champion. Time finally ran out on the talented Lakers. It was Boston's year. After the game, they were asked some questions. I, I won a, a little trophy. and Larry Bird was chosen the playoff MVP. They asked me a couple questions. A little, a little trophy. A little trophy MVP. <laughs> it would be the trophy. MVP trophy. MVP. And it just, it hit me. It, everything just came back to 1979 and how Irvin got the best of us in. And, does this get you even with magic for what happened between Michigan State and Indiana State all those many years ago? That. We're professionals now, but uh, I won this one for Terre Haute. You won it for Terre Haute, I'll tell you that. Finally, I got a rematch with him, and we beat him. And, and I meant it. I wouldn't have said it if I didn't mean it. You know, it, sure, it was for course. Terre Haute. Yeah, very good. You know you caused me a lot of sleepless nights. You know, um, I tell people all around the country when they ask me a question, who's the best, who this, who that? And um, I always tell them that, uh, you know, I didn't play back and way back and all that, but 
when I was playing that uh, you're the best all-around player that ever played and that <clears throat> but more than that you are the most feared player I feared you more than anybody else because I knew if it was a little time on the clock you know point one one half one, half a second this man would find a way to win that damn game <laughs> So, I'm hurt, so I can't play against the Celtics. You know, I'm killing myself. So, you know, Larry warming up. So, the anthem is sung and get introduced, and right before they go out on the court, Larry comes down, he said, you know what? Don't worry, I'm gonna put a show on for you. <laughs> And he went out, I think he scored 38 points, about 20 rebounds, about 15 assists. And every shot he would shoot, he would turn to me. <laughs> and I said, boy. See, most guys talk trash and talk stuff and can't bag it up. But Mr. Bird, you know you can bag your trash talking up. We're playing a game down in Atlanta, and this is how long ago this was, because Atlanta was a good team. And <laughs> they had Dominique and Doc Rivers and Reggie Theus and Kevin the Penguin Willis and Tree Rollins and all these guys. And we are getting hammered. We're just getting killed. We're down 25 at the half. Three seconds left in the half. Ainge, it does not go. And at the end of the first half, a standing ovation at the Omni for the Red Hot Atlanta Hawks. They lead the Celtics 70 to 48. And they're all trash talking, and fans are throwing stuff at us. And they're going, We're going to kill you, Celtics. Bird, Walton, McHale, Parrish, DJ. You guys are all frauds. What are you talking about? with the exception of Dominique Wilkins, who had too much class to ever say a thing. So we come in at halftime, we're just sulking in there, with tails between our legs. We walk in, we're sitting in the locker room, and Casey Jones, our fantastic coach, the most like John Wooden of any coach I've ever been a part of, Casey walks in, he looks at us, looks at his watch, doesn't say a word, walks over to the cooler and pulls out a beer. <laughs> Pops the beer, goes and sits down, pounds down the beer, just sitting there. Finishes the beer, looks at his watch, looks at us, goes over to the cooler and gets a second beer. Pops the beer, pounding it down, doesn't say a word. Looks at his watch, looks around at us, goes and gets a third beer, does the same thing. And then he gets up, looks at his watch for the final time, and he says, let's go. <laughs> so we go out there and we're warming up to we'll start the, uh, the third quarter. And they got a record sellout crowd there at the Omni. And they're going to start the third quarter. And you watch an NBA game, and nobody wants to ever take the ball out of bounds because they know they're never going to get it back. <laughs> Larry Bird always took the ball out of bounds. And that referee comes, and the referee hands the ball to Larry to start the third. We're down 25. Larry takes the ball and pushes it back into the midsection of the referee so that he can't get away, and the referee is like startled and staggered. What's going on here? It was all right there, right in front of the Celtic bench. And Larry looks right into the soul, right through the eyes of that referee, and he says to him, we're not gonna quit. You make sure you don't quit either. The guy just like melted on the spot. Larry hit 11 straight shots to start the third, including seven threes. Ben has Whitman on him, a much smaller man. Bird, spectacular! Oh, to get into when something goes wrong. They find Bird open. He winds up from 20. Ah. Meanwhile, he got nothing but net. And now oh, Bird is smoking. DJ will take it all the way. Has it blocked. Bird comes up with it. The basket counts. And oh. Ainge finds Bird cutting through. Larry fall away. Glass, two more. 
A moment ago, they took their lead. Bird in the lane. 33 points for number 33. Harris hits Larry Bird with it. 18 footer. Go! Larry Bird! We were tied at the end of the third. We won in overtime. We did not need a plane to get home. 10 foul shooter. Now, that is what that was the strategy. Get him. Let him make two. Bird is giving him a little verbiage, by the way. Harris gets the rebound to Larry Bird. Ball game. Celtics win it by three. Larry Bird, you're awesome. Now, and you so, played, of course, against them. Who, <laughs> who do you think was better? <laughs> Again, individually. Now, they were in the same era. Don't, don't you think how listen, about that with the era listen, talk? Listen, I'm going to give you <laughs> Olden Polynesian's take on this. Magic, yes, the showtime and everything else. I, I got to give the edge to Bird. I'm, I'm not going to say a name, but there's a phenomenal player today who – agrees with you. All right, you're a historian of the NBA. You're a fan. Fans love to do this. I'm going to put you on the spot. Best three players of all time. Best three players of yeah. all time? Michael Jordan, uh, Dr. J, Larry Bird. That is tough. Can you give me three? I, I know. Oh, my God. Three. Uh, uh, yeah, Larry Bird, Dr. J, Michael Jordan. Because you just got into that magic bird thing, which is tough, too. I know. I mean, I, can I get four? Sure. Uh, uh, magic. Uh, magic. Magic fourth? Yeah. Is Larry the better player? I, I, I've always said that Larry was the better player. You know? Really? Because he could do more, shoot from the outside, all those type of things. I have to give the edge to Bird. I mean, he can get his own shot off. He can get his teammate. Basically, what Magic did, he was able to do, plus be an offensive threat all the way out to that's the cool. three-point line. That's an incredible asset. This guy hit can ball. Yeah. And that's why we used to always look at Bird's like, hmm. Maybe he's not white, <laughs> you know, in a, in a little bit of a way, because he's got a lot of swag. <laughs> yeah. And before he, the word was really hot, yeah. Bird had swag. Oh yeah, he was the biggest. They say the greatest he trash talk talker. More trash than anybody I've ever seen in my life, Chris. So we're playing in Boston. I'm on the bench at the time. We have Derek. Who McKee. you with at that I'm time? I'm with Seattle. So, okay. We have Derek McKee, one of the top defensive yeah. guys around. KC is coaching us, KC Jones, who ha had, oh, coached had coached Boston. Boston. Yeah. Boston Celtics. But after a year away, KC is back on the bench as an assistant to Seattle. And tonight, he's back in Boston. So he look, he catches the ball on the left side. He catches the ball and Bird. looks over at our bench and goes, I'm going to take two dribbles right, cross over left. So we're all on the bench like, this dude's And Derek McKee real. is on And Derek's on him. <laughs> Don't let him do that to you, D. <laughs> <laughs> he takes his two dribbles, cross over, pull up jump shot. Wow. And looks over at our bench, and we're all looking at each other like, <laughs> is he for real? It's like, come on. Just like when we put Scott Webman on, you know, I don't know if you heard about that. It's like, don't, come on, that's embarrassing. Don't Yo, put him yeah, on Yeah, Bird me. said. Yeah, yeah, don't he, put a don't, white don't, guy don't on. Don't put a white guy on. Did me. he say that to y'all? Man, he talked more trash than any. I, I don't think anybody can talk trash like him. Really? And the fact that he's able to back it up made it that much special. And that he was white probably really. Oh, uh, that even, never came into play. Worse. The fact that he could back it up, that's <laughs> what we looked at. It's like, this dude here is for real. Wow. I remember my very first game in the Boston Garden. Now, I had been in the Boston Garden with the Grateful Dead and heard the fans chant, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. And the fans are starting to chant, Larry, Larry, MVP, MVP. And the scoreboard is shaking up and down. So I go up to him, I said, gosh, I can't hear. What are they saying? Are, are they cheering for Jerry? And he said, no, they're cheering for me, Larry. <laughs> and then at the very end of the game, we're going to win the game unless we miss our free throws. And so I'm inbound in the ball and I throw it to Larry who goes up, gets fouled immediately and goes up and he makes two free throws. Very next time, same exact thing. I throw it to Larry, two more free throws. Next time, Larry's guarded. I throw it to DJ. DJ goes up there and knocks down two free throws. Next time, Larry's guarded. DJ's guarded. So I throw it to Danny Ainge, who's the best free throw shooter on the team. And 
as Danny's walking up there to shoot the free throws, Larry walks up to me and says, hey, Walton, I know this is your first game here, but if you want to stay on this team, you throw the ball to me every time. <laughs> and if you can't get it to me, then it's okay to throw it to DJ. If you can't get it to me or DJ, just throw it to me anyway, and I'll take care of business. There was nobody like Larry Bird. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know you worked out with him that summer, but you knew the minds, his mindset that summer. I actually came to work out with him in the French Lick, and I realized what I, 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 I thought I worked hard. I really did. And we started running up and down the hill over there. You remember running up and down that hill. If you've been to French Lick, there's a hill that's on the backside that now goes up to Pete Dye. I thought I was going to die. And I realized, and he, he'd been doing it routinely. I had come to visit, and I was doing it, and I knew his intent was to get back there. Uh, I, I'm, I'm speaking for him, so that's, that's always dangerous. His passion for being so supportive of whatever it is he's doing, and in this case, the Celtics and, and, and Red Arbach, had him at a high level in terms of his competitiveness and his ability to prepare, because you can't have success unless you prepare. I don't know anyone in my life that's ever prepared better. My very first game as a professional, we're playing up in Portland, Maine. I was with the Knicks at the time, and it's a it's an exhibition game. And Larry's out there, and he's got some free agent guard name and everything. And, and, and here I am, new in the league, kind of excited about having a professional uniform on. And it was you know, a great moment for me. And he came down with about, I think it was about 18 seconds to go in the quarter. Sitting there on the bench, and Larry takes a move, the move where he always takes the ball, and he puts it over this guy's head. He picked the ball up like this to pass it and he threw it over the top of my head. I thought he threw it. I swear to God, you know, usually they just turn around. This guy not only turned around, but it took about three steps towards the basket, like Larry shot it. And I turned around, did a 360 through the ball was wet, and I turned back around. He was standing like that, shaking his head like this. This guy turned around, and he's about five feet off Larry, and Larry almost, almost looked like he's got his hips on it, or his hands on his hip with the ball. And then he shot a three on me. He drills a three. And I'm on the bench, or I'm playing with the Knicks. I'm not, I stand off the bench and go, oh, man. You know? I looked around, I'm sending my teammates, and here I am, stand up. Yeah. I mean, that just sticks out in my mind. You know, just one thing that he done to me. It was probably one of the most embarrassing moments of my career. But you, you played with Larry when Larry was really hurting, when, when his back was starting to fail him. You saw him do some amazing things when he was a lot, a lot less than 100%. Larry had two jobs his last seven years of playing. It was playing basketball, and then it was him being committed to taking care of his back. I would see him on TV laying down, and, and then they told me that he had to lay down on planes, different things like that, and I was like, wow. He did everything. I always laugh at him all the time. I called him last year. I saw him in Miami. And I, you know, I just happened to turn on the TV, and I was sitting there, and he was in Miami at a game or something. A year or so ago, and Dan Dyrick was sitting next to him, and I was like, "Good, that's his back doctor." I was like, "Good God, man! <laughs> you know, is that is that guy ever gonna leave you alone?" Every day, just for him to go to shoot around, just for him to practice, uh, and then the games, he would sit there. Nobody saw it. I mean, we would. I remember we were playing Detroit in the playoffs, and I mean, they brought a bike, and I mean, I remember sitting there, and I'm like. It was my first year, and I was like, why the hell are they bringing a bike into the locker room? I mean, what, and I mean he, he rode the bike for an hour to get, his, to get his back loose so he could play the game. From 88 to 92, it was painful to watch. It was painful to cover. Larry is quite ornery when he's not feeling well, which means he was ornery for those next four years. He could manage the pain in a way that very few people can do. There'd be days he could come in the office and he couldn't stand up straight. But even after two ruptured Achilles tendons and surgery on his back in 1991, Bird kept going to work. Product of a lesson learned many years before, seeing the swollen ankle of a man long since gone. Well, we don't know if it broke or not, but it looked broke to me. I had to go to work and he had to get his boot on and it took everything I had to help him get that boot on his foot. And he stood up limping and he says, well, I'll see you this weekend because he was working construction at the time. And I was pretty amazed how he could fight through that all week, then come home on the weekend, and it was black and swollen. And he'd sit around on the weekend and put that boot on and go again. If you get paid to go to work, you got to go to work. And 
to me, those are greater memories to me than any championship because I saw the will of a guy. I mean, Larry could have hung it up. Larry could have said, this is too much. But he knew how much uh, it meant for us. We, we, we had no chance. I mean, we, we, we had no chance without him. Bird knew that if the Celtics are to win a 17th title, he will have to lead them there. And, I mean, he sacrificed a lot of pain and did a lot of great things so that we could have a chance. Not, not to win it, you know, we weren't going to win the championship, but we had a chance just because of, the, of the, the sacrifice he went through every day to give us that chance. Every time I would play, I was wondering if I was going to be in a wheelchair, was I ever going to be able to, you know, walk on the beach or hold my kids. His pain and his quest for basketball became all-encompassing. Very few people really knew what Larry was living with, because this was Larry's issue, and there was no sharing of his pain. You know, I probably should have retired in 88, 89, but uh, it's that competition. I saw this dude right here go out against Portland, and I mean, we were in a, we were in a playoff hunt and he and he had a plastic thing on I mean from here I mean it was it was a full body, body brace it was yeah. body armor he got 48 Bird turning on Robinson as uh, he was shooting some all here's Bird from the Robinson and then five, yes. five gone by in the third only three for 13 from downtown Bird again their team defense Bird for three Chicago. Bird. Yes. Bird. To the reverse. Yes. Wilkins remaining in the fourth quarter. Bird. Bird with the fadeaway. One assist away from a triple double. Bird. Bird. Yes. Larry Bird with a, a triple double. 49 points. Was thought to be a scratch for today because of the Achilles tendon injury and a bruised thigh. And he has come through with his best game of the season. And wearing that. And hit the game shot and called it when he hit it. All right, here's Bird. Drexler all over and he fires. It's a three-pointer. My God, I mean, the, the pain that he went through to give us a chance. Not, not to win it. You know, we weren't going to win the championship. But we had a chance just because of, the, of the, the sacrifice he went through every day to give us that chance. And I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, please leave a like to show support, subscribe if you are new, and here are two new episodes that you may enjoy.